So today I visited Fenstie's Flea Market. You see they're trying to make it look like a barn. Uh, I guess they didn't want to have the graphic of a bleak uh, barren warehouse on their business card. Probably a good choice. Um, but despite it's kind of, again, you know, drab exterior, it's a pretty neat place. Uh, it's large. Um, it is in southeast Pennsylvania, uh, between kind of Reading, Philly, Allentown area. Um, you go in, this is the first thing you see. It is large uh, pinball machines, vintage pinball machines. I'm not particularly into them, but you got to still think that they're fa pretty fantastic. So, um, you yeah, know, you get inside and you say, oh, this should be a good place. Um, there are a lot of different things here. Um, this is a whole different section. You can see how big it is, a bunch of different vendors, individual vendors. Um, obviously, I'm not going to include everything that's in here because half the stuff I wouldn't even give a second, you know, look to. Um, so I'm going to focus instead on things that are at least, you know, more interesting to me. Um, so there are, you know, things like some toys, you know, an old director set, um, Candyland, a Lone Ranger board game. It's just the board. Uh, this Tom Tom plane, um, should have taken a closer look at that. This record player, you know, the, the sheer metal green coolness of this. I mean, dirty as all get out, but super cool, Karen. Uh, selling for $45, um, super cool. Keystone uh, clock, supposedly Schmitz. Um, thought that was kind of cool. A bunch of games, most of them super ordinary, nothing at all exciting. But then up here, there was this Carrier Strike um, and Pathfinder. Carrier Strike was the one I was particularly interested in by Milton Bradley. I have not seen this before. Uh, it kind of made me think of Battleship. Uh, it was looked complete in box. The board itself was in pretty good shape. It didn't, you know, smell particularly bad or anything like that. Sometimes you got a lot of mildew and things. This wasn't bad. So uh, some kind of strategy game. You got that grid. Um, there were these, you know, aircraft carriers, and there's actually little planes and things in there. Um, I almost bought it just for those. I thought those were so cool. Um, it was thirty bucks. I passed. Another one, Secret of uh, Nim. I actually don't even know what this is. Whitman has it, so it can't be a Disney thing, though that's what it reminded me of, like some Disney animation. The board is pretty clean, kind of neat, but yeah, even no matter what the price, I forget what it was, I'm not going to do it. You see these all-in-one things all over the place, and I wish they worked. Uh, you know, I wish you could get the signal and, and watch TV on these things. Uh, this is Panasonic. It was cheaper than I thought. It felt very plasticky. Uh, it still had a cool look. Um, you can see the channels change on there, um, you know, kind of nice satisfying click, um, but you know, you, you can't do much with it. Um, it was, um, um, you're going to see the price on here at some point. I think it was 30 bucks. I forget what it was, uh, $20, which isn't bad, but, uh, and it actually says operation identification, which is like a crime fighter thing. So, but you know, I'm going to pass it. There's not much you can do with it. Um, yeah, you know, there's one of these things, equalizer, I don't, I don't know how to use it. So computer baseball, these are cool. These are really actually pinball games with nothing to do with the computer, but super cool. Again, 40 bucks, 35 bucks, I had a pass. Um, this thing is probably the one thing I wish I had gotten. Uh, I had never seen something like this before. It's a um, toy, kind of a construction toy, Googleplex. Never even heard of it before. Um, and there was some damage on the box. You can see a little bit of water staining, but overall it was not so bad. Uh, it was $40, which was about, it was probably a fair price. You know, you look on eBay and it's about that. This had um, the that instruction sheet and a bunch of pieces. You know, no way to know if it's complete, but they're clean. They weren't all dusty. I sort of wish I had gotten it, could have taken it home, played with it, and then resold it, but I did not. Uh, this was, a, again, Sometimes you think things should be worth a lot more. This is a brownie camera from Kodak for a buck. Uh, we got it. Um, we opened it up when we got it home. You got to do those two tabs. You got to actually pull out that thing. Um, there was actually film in there, believe it or not. Uh, probably exposed, but uh, you know, we're not going to pay to have it developed. Now, this is a Hot Wheels section. Um, not into Hot Wheels or Matchbox per se. Some of the sets I like, but just to show that these are here. I know there's a lot of people with interest in this. So when I saw this, uh, the, the train set, I, I wanted it. Uh, that Marks logo, that specific Marks, Marks logo for me, makes me want to buy stuff I don't even want to buy. I don't need a train like this. I have a Lionel train that's actually better. Um, 
This, again, the box is obviously in terrible condition. The train itself was very plasticky. I mean, I know Lionel can have plastic cards, but these are cheap. They just felt super cheap. Um, that blue controller, plasticky and cheap, but still something about the colors are really cool. Um, I, I would have thought about buying it. I actually took it up to the lady because there's no price tag on it. Uh, she tried to contact the seller, couldn't get a hold of him, um, and she wouldn't let me buy it. So I have no idea what uh, what they were buying it for. But again, I didn't need it. Uh, it's that logo, when I was a kid, I had like Magic Shot and Spiral Ball, my sister had. Uh, my brother had Cat's Eye, all with that logo. So it's kind of like a Pavlov's dog kind of thing. I see that logo, and I just, I want it. Um, pretty big place with uh, video games, uh, DVDs. Um, I forget if they had music. Um, newer stuff, older stuff. There's a Game Boy Portable. Uh, NES, NS, SNES, um, Xbox, you know, PlayStation. Uh, I, I forget if they had some Atari stuff in there. Not a ton. But you could obviously spend a bunch of time here looking. Prices were reasonable. Not cheap, but also not crazy overpriced. This thing I thought was just fantastic. At first I thought it was a toy, uh, like little cowboy thing. But there's a bunch of arrows, and they seem, they seem like they mean business. Um, and, and when I started to realize that this is probably used by some hunter. Like this is not a cheap thing. This is like, I don't know if it's real leather, but whatever. Um, there's a deer on there. It's almost like, you know, when the uh, pilots in World War II shot something down, they put a star on their plane. That guy put a, you know, a deer pin on it. Um, and so it's got that guy's name on there. It was, it was really kind of really interesting, very different, uh, well-made. Um, if, if my name was, you know, John Hoffmeister and I was going to go hunting deer, uh, I would definitely pay $35 for this thing. It was, it was cool. This was a Nerf thing. Um, that's my son looking at that. So they had some regular Nerf guns, but that the guy had kind of tricked out so that they shoot faster and farther. They have modified ones. These kind of are like steampunk, 50 bucks, but I mean, those are fantastic. Uh, really kind of cool. Um, the guy knew Nerf. So, I mean, this store was just devoted to Nerf. Uh, this is the guy, Matt Snyder. He, he's in all sorts of different Nerf cons and things like that. So pretty interesting. Record player, one of those kind of standard pullouts. Too big and, you know, probably crappy to buy. Um, you'll see a couple of jukeboxes there, some Disney stuff, big, big speakers. Probably too big, too expensive, but kind of neat. There's not a ton of books, but here's a section of books. Um, the ones that drew my attention were these Time Life ones. I had these as kids, some of them like Early Man um, and Mountain One, which you'll see in a second that I pull out. I loved them and I almost memorized the pages on them. The other ones weren't so great. But my sister actually had asked me to find these and I found them and they were 25 books for, uh, for 20 bucks. So I definitely bought them. Bunch of records, a lot of records and not just crap that you see at like Goodwills and also alphabetized, which is fantastic because you know how much time you can waste at a lot of Goodwills and thrifts pouring through stuff that you don't give a crap about. Prices are, again, reasonable. Like there's a Blue Oyster called for three bucks. Uh, there's a Classic Cars for four bucks. Um, you know, different qualities. Some of these are definitely used. The ones that are better will cost you more, but lots of records, lots of records. You could spend hours there if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, another section, some models, some more modern kind of toys. They're not all just old toys. Uh, this is, doesn't do too much for me. There's this weird puppet marionette Merlin guy. Um, that, this, uh, the game up here drew my attention uh, at first, and, and not the trivia challenge, but this thing. At first I thought it might be old, but then it's just one of those silly, you know, air powered things that the ball, you know, kind of floats on the air current and you have to move it. And it I skipped it. Clue, the museum caper. I didn't know about this. Kind of cool 3D base. And they do actually have some 8-track tapes, uh, which generally sell real cheap because nobody wants them. Here's one of those crazy k ones. Um, I bought this one and another one. So um, I would say Fences is a good place to be. I think we probably spent a good two hours there. We didn't buy a ton of stuff, but there was a fair amount uh, to look at. And, and I, you know, we very much enjoyed our time there. I would definitely go back. So uh, hope you enjoyed this overview. Check it out.